Good morning. If you don't know me, my name is Allie Beamish. I've been coming to this church for my entire life, and I stand here to thank the congregation, the pastors, and everybody in between for the life you have given me. I think for about as long as I've come here, I've tried to explain its significance to my friends at school. They think church is all about crosses and singing. To them, church is just a service. They go to church, listen, and go home, and it doesn't affect them beyond the building. To me, church isn't boring. It's not the service. Church is lively and caring. It's where I go to be with my favorite people. At Asbury, people know me. They know my family. They've watched me grow up. So many aspects of me began in this building. I remember being around seven. It was after I had come down from Sunday school. I was in the gathering center, kind of just waiting. The piano was open, sitting patiently in the corner. I don't know how it happened, but Susan Schaefer walked me over to the piano. She put my right hand on the black keys and taught me how to play Mary Had a Little Lamb. Last week on that same piano, I played in my final recital with my piano teacher, Mrs. Strong, after playing for 10 years. Playing piano is something I truly love, and I'm so grateful for the joy Susan Schaefer sparked and the ability and confidence Mrs. Strong fostered in me from such a young age. As I grew up here, I always did bells and choir and musicals. I sang and played alongside my best friends. I was taught music and so much more by Carol Lamica, another one of my favorite people. I may not be pursuing music in my career, but I know it will always be a home to me, as it has been for so long and holds so many memories among the people I love. Another spark came from when I was around 13 years old. It was my first time being a group leader for Vacation Bible School. I still have no idea why Paula trusted 13-year-old me with watching 28-year-olds, but I'm so glad she did. I loved that week. I soaked up every moment of it. Now I'm finishing my second year of working at an, at an elementary school. I'm working towards my teacher's assistant certification. In two weeks, I leave to work at a camp all summer, and then I will begin working towards my bachelor's in inclusive early childhood and childhood education. Through my short experience of working with young children, I realized that kindness is a learned behavior. I realized that my love of working with children started with being loved myself. At Asbury, I always felt that people loved me. From Paula Dugan and Melissa Bohr in elementary school to all of the leaders and pastors involved in middle school and high school youth groups, I have felt so much love. And I'm grateful that this love has translated into a career dedicated to making others feel loved, accepted, and supported. So really, thank you. I'm so thankful for the people of this church. You have taught me to be kind and compassionate and inclusive from the very beginning. Thank you for supporting and encouraging all aspects of me and being proud of me. I absolutely love it here, and I can't wait to take that love wherever in the world it takes me. Thank you. Hello and good morning. My name is Mary Benjamin, and as you all know, I'm here today to speak to you as a senior reflecting on the past, but also to look into the future. Now, the unknown, as we all know, can be extremely scary. What waits for us in the future is one gigantic question mark. And take it from me, someone who has absolutely no idea what they want to do with their life, it can be a little overwhelming. Yet, what is always there, no matter what lies ahead, is the love of God. As I have grown up in this congregation, the main thing I have learned is that God is always with us. Faith is something that is absolute and is carried with you throughout an entire lifetime. So as I stand here today, sad to be leaving my childhood behind and nervous to head to college, I can be comforted in the knowledge that my faith and God's love will always be a constant in my life. A passage that has been a great source of comfort for me in the past couple of weeks is Jeremiah 29. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, plans to give you hope and a future. So I know that God has a plan for each and every one of us here today. If you're like me, who is making a pretty sizable transition in life, although it might scare you to death, there is no need to fear the future. As we make our way through life, God will be right there with us. More than just finding comfort from the Word of God, the Bible teaches us how to live. In the scripture read today, it says, The wicked have laid a snare for me, 
and that the Word of God is the light of our paths. I personally have tried to use the Word of God as my own light through the darkness that is high school, which I can tell you is full of snares to fall into. But thanks to my experiences here at church, I was constantly reminded of how to live as Jesus did. In Sunday school, Miss Paula told me the golden rule, treat others the way you would like to be treated, or more formally, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. This was drilled into my head almost every Sunday, and although it may be cliche, it's for good reason. While I don't know about any actual snares, remembering this rule has helped me bite my tongue on a few key occasions. But it extends also further than just navigating adolescence. The golden rule lights the path for us all. Whether it's a simple action to make someone's day or an act of charity, kind deeds truly make a difference in this world. I implore each and every one of you to look at the scripture and to find your own lights to your own paths. Work to be good Christians who live purposefully in order to do good, be good, and make a difference in the lives of others. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Riley Flynn. And when my family first started at Asbury, I was always too nervous to go to Sunday school. I would refuse to go and I'd cry in the hallway and beg my mom to take me with her to the, Sunday, to the 10 o'clock service. There was one time when I was having my weekly meltdown that Miss Paula came up to my mom and me. I thought she was gonna tell me the same thing that my mom had been saying, that it'll be fun, there's other kids there. Instead, she knelt down on the ground, looked me in the eye and said, God doesn't care where you worship. You can go to church with your parents or come to Sunday school or worship from anywhere at all. That's always stayed with me. There's something about the way Miss Paula says things that makes you feel like everything's gonna be okay. As I got older and got to know people, it was easier to go to Sunday school, and while I didn't always necessarily love it, I still went. I guess I couldn't get it through my head at 10 years old that when you talk to people, you might actually make friends. When I was in eighth grade, I started doing the musicals at Asbury because one of those new friends forced me to do it with her. Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. It was the first show I ever did, and since then, I've done them every year, and I even started doing them at my school. I don't know if I would have found the love I have for performing without that show, and it's become a big part of who I am. When I went on my first high school mission trip, it was to Tennessee. It was the first mission trip that in incoming freshmen were allowed to go on, and it was very intimidating. I didn't really know a lot of the kids my age or really anyone at all, and I didn't want to be Mackenzie's little sister. It ended up being one of the best trips I've ever been on, and everyone was so welcoming, and the older kids made me want to reach out in the same way that they did when I was in their place. As I had more experiences and made more friends through Asbury, I felt like I was becoming more of myself. All the mission trips have given me an opportunity to grow as a person. And it's amazing to see how other people live and being able to help people in need is one of the most rewarding things I've ever done. I've always said that the mission trip week is my favorite week of the whole year and not being able to do that last year taught me not to take things like that for granted. In the past year and a half, Watching church at home through the live stream instead of being here, having youth group on Zoom, and not seeing the people I like to consider my family has reminded me of what Miss Paula said to me all those years ago. You can worship from anywhere. So my family listened to church on Sunday mornings while we ate breakfast. We connected with our church family during birthday drive-bys and by watching Sean Mahan's morning show. We wrote letters to some of the elder members of the church to help us all stay connected in our church community. As we start to hopefully move forward to some type of normalcy after COVID, these memories will help us to stay, be resilient in the future. I'm lucky enough to have family all around me to support me along with the friendships I've formed here. The experiences I've had in youth group and at Asbury in general have taught me to be kind, compassionate, and strong. I know that I will take these things with me and they'll help me worship from anywhere. Thank you. Hi, 
My name is Fallon, and as I'm sure you could guess, I'm a senior. I want to start this sermon with one of my favorite verses. This is Proverbs 4.26. Ponder the path of your feet, then all your ways will be sure. Life is undoubtedly full of uncertainty, but this does not mean we should live in fear of what could be. This means we should look to the future with bright eyes and hope. We should have faith in the times when we struggle with our beliefs the most. This is no easy task, but John 1.5 has some encouraging words. It reads, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. It is easy to stray, to be uncertain. Holding faith will enrich your life and bless your soul with knowledge and strength. I wrote this sermon with encouragement as my intention and if this helps any single person listening, then I will be beyond happy. I ask you to go out, to have faith, love, and kindness in your heart, and strength in your soul. I chose to end this with Proverbs 3.3. 3. Let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck, and write them on the tablet of your heart. Thank you.